let's talk about you and why you've decided to do this because congratulations thank you C, thank you but also I mean a difficult decision because you've yeah. taken the job that your friend was killed doing well I mean it was absolutely ghastly it's undemocratic it's brutal and horrible but um, what made you want to do it well I've been a campaigner for 30 years and obviously people know me as an actor and a writer um, but uh, I've also been a trade unionist I've spoken at the European Parliament I've always been involved in workers rights um, and then when I met Jo and I heard she was campaigning to be Batley and Spence MP, I was like, oh, my hometown, and she's amazing. So I, I went to support her, and then we campaigned against the closures of uh, libraries in Batley and Burstall. And going around, you know, door to door, I could see absolutely what a difference she could make to people's lives, that she had a massive impact. And then, um, I mean, she, whilst we were campaigning, she was always an advocate for women in politics, saying, oh, you know, Tracy, you should think about a political life and maybe become an MP. Um, who knew what was going to happen? Um, but I just felt really angry that um, it had happened and I felt I needed to step up. And, you know, if the people of Batley and Spen had faith in me, I should stand and then obviously see how that went. And I'm so privileged they voted for me and um, they put their trust in me, yeah. You, you said there yourself you've been campaigning for three decades, mm -hmm. but obviously people do know you because you have a very successful career, not just as an actor, but as a writer yeah, as well. Yeah. I mean, do, did you have any concerns that people might not give you the credit you deserve, might not take you as seriously as you should be? Oh, of course, I've got to prove myself, and uh, but the people judged me on that. Um, the, you know, we'd, I did have a selection process that was very rigorous. I think it was over 70 people actually applied in the first instance. Um, the Labour Party have to choose and then the people choose. So, you know, I do feel as, as every step goes by, I'm tested. But, of course, you have to deliver too. So I'm working very hard to, you know, get settled and, and, and get to work. I love that you said you were angry in that kind of partly mm, motivated because yeah. I know that that's something Joe Cox you know yeah, as a real feminist would be proud of but I mean do you have any safety concerns oh of course uh, you know you have to be mindful about um anybody actually you know in the public eye has to be mindful of the of, of the uh, dangers but the police and um and parliament also are taking it seriously um I do think though if you are afraid then they win so you have to still be accessible still reach out still do your job um uh, whilst also being cautious, you have the duty of care for your staff, so you can't be, you know, um, you know, dilettante about your safety. You you have to look after your staff as well. Now, politicians have much more challenges than I have the authority or time to <laughs> fully explore right here and now. But for you, in terms of challenges, do you think it's going to be difficult to to get people to look forward and kind of, you know, move on from what has happened? I think people are desperate to do that because there are so many challenges ahead. And certainly, Batley and Spen has been without an MP for far too long. And there are, there are uh, urgent concerns like, you know, uh, cuts to Social Security or um, closures to uh, um, hospitals, downgrades or... Um, food banks, I mean, 8,000 people um, have used the food bank in Batley over the last year. And this is, this, you know, this is not acceptable. We have to get to work. But in terms of Jo Cox's legacy, do you feel like you kind of have to... Are you taking her plan or are you putting Tracy's plan on that as well? Oh, well, I mean, she was an extraordinary woman and a phenomenal MP, so I would be a fool not to build on, on her legacy. But also, you know, I've got a unique background and the not... But there's nobody in the House of Parliament with my unique background, so of course I'd build on that. Um, I'm hoping to use that to build um, a relationship with all the sort of media companies and bring jobs and training. Do you think to the that area. will help your mm. experience in Corrie? How will that help you as a politician? Well, certainly my experience working with young people, running oh, no. after-school clubs, making um, uh, films, um, working uh, with communities. I, I absolutely know there's potential for jobs and training. In terms of you personally, then, just take us back to Monday because yeah. I mean, what a day! Well, so just blew my mind slightly. It did feel all very surreal. It's a good time for women in politics, isn't it? Well, certainly with Hillary and, you know, I... I Teresa. I, yeah, I do think... Um it's, it's, you know, we, there is a sense that we can actually be seen as serious politicians and make a difference. I love that I've just said Teresa as if I'm on first name terms with our <laughs> Prime Minister. Oh, oh, didn't I just say Hillary? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, good luck going forward. Thank you so much. I'm sure much. you're going to make a huge success of it. Thank Thanks. you for talking to us.